In this video, I'll show you how I've created a nice and minimalistic music media controller in Home Assistant. It's got buttons to control playback, including shuffle and repeat. You can also set the volume with a really nice slider that I haven't seen in Home Assistant before. For this, you will need Paper Buttons Row, Button Card, and my Slider V2 installed from Hacks. As always, you could just go to the Gumroad link if you want to grab the full code. I'm going to start by setting up the buttons for controlling playback. I'm going to use Paper Buttons Row Card for this. I start by just adding icons. Every dash under buttons will be a new button in the dashboard. Don't add overall styling yet, it will cause problems if it's empty. I'm then just adding some very basic styling to the first button so that we can actually see it. I then copy this button and paste it four times, and I change the icons as I go. I want buttons for toggling repeat and shuffle, and I want buttons for next, previous, and a play pause button. Then I want to add overall styling to these buttons. I basically just want them to be close together, but center aligned. I just add a red background so I can see the size of the container. We then only need to add flex wrap, no wrap, to make sure they stay on one row. Justify Content Center will move them all into the middle, and I add some basic padding up and down. Then let's start styling the buttons. I'll set the button background to none so it's transparent, but I make the color of the icon white. You should edit this depending on if you use dark or light mode. Then, I set a fixed width and height of 40 pixels. Lastly, it's important to add Flex Shrink 0. This makes sure that the button is never scaled down. We can then copy the styling onto all the other buttons. Cool, let's make the play pause button a bit more prominent. I change the width and height to 80 pixels. Then I want to add a gradient background to this button. So I use a website called cssgradient.io to help me generate the gradient CSS code. Just play around with this until you find something you like. Once you're happy, copy the bottom CSS code that it is giving you and paste it into the background of the play button. I then just change the icon color to black, and I add a border radius of 50% to the button. Some last edits to the gradient and the button design is done. I just needed to remove the overall background color. The buttons don't do anything yet, so I'm going to create scripts for each button that can run when clicking the buttons. This is pretty basic, but I'm just going to create a script for each button. We could do this directly in the card, but I think it's cleaner to use a script. Next, Previous and Play Pause is straightforward. Just add the action and choose your speaker, then save. For Shuffle and Repeat, we have to do a bit more work. There isn't a toggle action for these two functions, so we have to create it ourselves with an If-Else action. So first add a If-Then action. For the condition, I use a template. I think that is the easiest. Here I just paste a Jinja template that evaluates to true or false. So for this, we check if the shuffle attribute is currently false. If it is, it will run the action to turn shuffle on. Lastly, we can add an else action that turns shuffle off. The repeat script is the same. We just have to edit the condition to look at the repeat attribute instead. For this, we have to make sure the value we are searching for are placed inside apostrophes. Then we can just remove the actions and replace them with repeat actions. I don't really care about being able to repeat one song, so I will just make it toggle between repeat all and repeat off. Back in the card editor, let's add these scripts as tap actions to our buttons. For some reason with paper buttons row, we have to use the old way of running actions called service calls. I haven't been able to make it work when using the new action method, but the old way works just the same. Once you have one tap action ready, you can just copy it onto the other buttons and change the script. Let's move on and create a cool slider so that we can adjust the volume. I'm first just going to do some housekeeping. I'm going to grab the full code of the first button row and paste it into a new vertical stack card. That way we can keep all these elements together below each other. Let's add a card to this vertical stack and search for slider card V2. As soon as we add the speaker as an entity, you can see a slider showing up. It probably works correctly straight away, but I prefer to specify the mode I want to use. For this, it will be volume. Then I disable tapping and enable sliding. Similar to button card and paper buttons row, we can do a lot of custom CSS with this card. First, I set overflow of the container to visible. This will be important later. Then I set the height of the card overall to eight pixels. Progress is the area to the left in the slider, sort of indicating the current volume. 
I just make it red for now, then I round out the corner with a border radius of 4 pixels. Track is the right area. If we just set the background to none for this, we can use the card section to style the unused volume area. I just set the background of the card to a dark gray color. Thumb is that little black square. It's the element we slide back and forth to adjust the volume. I set the width and height to be 18 pixels, and the background to be white. I then set border radius to 50%. It looks a bit off-center, we can push it up by specifying top to be minus 5 pixels. Lastly, let's use that gradient from the play pause button for the progress area as well. That is looking pretty neat so far, but it would be nice to know what music is playing as well. So let's also add some cover art and the artist and song title. Let's add a custom button card to our vertical stack. I'll use this to add the cover art. First thing to do is add the speaker as an entity. Set show icon and show name to false. And please don't judge me when I set show entity picture to true. It's my kids that use this speaker. Styling for this is really simple. I just set card padding to zero and I set entity picture width to 100% and height to auto. Then I just move it to the top of the stack Let's create another custom button card and add the speaker as an entity again. This time I'm going to hide the icon but show the name. I'm going to change the output of the name with a short Java function. Add three square brackets and inside write return. After return I'm going to insert the media title attribute of the entity. This works because we added the speaker as an entity to the card, so it is just referencing that. After that I'll add a plus sign and two apostrophes. Inside, I'll add BR for line break. Then we can add the artist the same way as the song title. I also want to make the artist name a bit smaller. So I'll add a span with font size styling next to BR. Then I just want to do some very basic styling to this. I remove the background and I set the font size of the name to 20 pixels. I also play around with the padding so that the song info is centered between the buttons and the cover art. Finally, one thing you could do is move the cover art and song info into a conditional card. This way the song info would only be displayed if the speaker is actually playing something. I don't really know what I prefer here. The problem with this is that the cover art will disappear if you just pause for a short time. Maybe you could replace the text and image with a paused graphic. Let me know in the comments if you have any cool ideas. I hope you learned something from this video. I think this is pretty nice and neat, but there is of course a few things we can do to take this even further. I for example have a few dashboard buttons that starts various Spotify playlists. That way we never really have to open the Sonos or Spotify apps. The kids also have a few physical buttons they can press to start various playlists. Let me know in the comments what you think, and consider becoming a channel member to get access to the Discord server. As always, thanks for watching.